What is up, my Tough Builds crew? Welcome back to yet another Tough Builds episode. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be dashing into no more than the gauge cluster. And why am I going to be taking the gauge cluster off and fixing the gauge cluster? And the problem with why I am doing all of this in the beginning is because whatever have happened to this car in the previous owners, I'm not going to say owner because it was several owners, they were involved in an accident prior to mine. I don't know if the airbag went off and splewed all over the gauge cluster, which made it really hard to read what I needed to see, which as soon as to be like your flashers, I couldn't see anything on that. I couldn't tell how many miles were on the car before, so I need to buff the hell out of this gauge cluster. And if you guys like this video, make sure you guys go ahead and smack that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the bell on the side when you smash that subscribe button. Don't forget that. Guys, I want to thank every single one of you guys. We are now at 1,800 subscribers. My dreams of becoming a bigger YouTuber are slowly reaching the mountain, and I have nobody else to thank but you guys that has shared my videos and liked them and always leaving those beautiful comments comments make sure that you guys leave me comments i do read them and there will be another video coming out very shortly to answer all of your questions well without further ado ladies and gentlemen i don't want to bore you with all the talk so let's go ahead and get rocking 2018 ford mustang gt ladies and gentlemen you can do this on your ecoboost your v6 mustang today we're going to be taking off the gauge cluster i'll show you guys step by step on how to actually remove your gauge cluster maybe you got a brand new one or maybe you got an aftermarket we need to clean off whatever spilt here from the previous owner. I'm going to buff it. I need to get these panels off of it so I have easy access to the plastic that is underneath. Before we start this process, we're going to go outside and disconnect the negative terminal. Now we are looking at a very big cluster, ladies and gentlemen. We have to have a lot of pieces that we got to take off, and there's a lot of stuff we're going to have to zip out of place. The first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is take off your panel right here, and you can either use a panel tool which is very highly recommended if you have one finally have access inside the panel we still need to remove this girl here i'm going to switch over to our seven millimeter this is just held in by those same clips once you take the bolt out Be really careful on how you pull them out. I like to start from the bottom, like how I was using this girl here to pull this out. You're gonna wanna press really hard on this button here and pull it out so that way you don't wreck your button. Now you can kind of get a point on how your cluster is actually held in place. So you see one here and then you got one there. That is all one piece. It does go with your cluster. We need to go on the bottom still. I'm just gonna remove this part. I need to pull this panel off here because it is one piece with this girl. At the bottom of your steering wheel, you're gonna see your first Torx bit. And you're gonna see a tunnel that pretty much runs up. And inside that tunnel, you're gonna see another Torx bit right there. Both of those Torx bits needs to be pulled. One is a Torx bit. And the one that's in the tunnel is actually a seven millimeter. Remove the plastic shields. You're gonna to wanna to bring the steering wheel completely out, lock it in place. And sadly, you gotta be rough with these or else you will never be able to get it. You're gonna have two screws here and then one screw at the bottom. You're gonna wanna jump over to the other side. You gotta take out this girl here too. This is just held on by retainers. They're really easy to get out. You're gonna wanna unplug it. And then you have that girl that holds it in. And once you get that out, you're gonna have another seven millimeter here. You can pull this out. I'm gonna use my handy dandy gun. And you will tell the difference between which ones go where, because these two go there, and your long one goes at the bottom. And yes, your vent does come out with it. Should have plenty of room to just pull plastic shield up, and you'll be amazed. Plastic is very flexible. 
Finally got the cluster out. Go ahead and take out the cluster. I'm gonna have a connector behind it. Here is your cord that holds it in place. There's gonna be a little tab button there. I'm gonna take this cluster now that you can actually see everything around it, I'm gonna buff it completely out. I wish it was digital. It's not, it's pretty much factory. I need a new gauge cluster because whatever got all over this gauge cluster, a lot of it came out, but a lot of it is still on it and this sucks. Got your two clips that secure it in place and don't forget to plug it back in or you will not have a gauge cluster. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly put it behind my brand new steering wheel here. I'm gonna grab the connector. Let's get it around that lip. And how you would know is that those holes line up and then also on your other side, they line up. You can take your two screws that came out. That's pretty much gonna do it for putting it back on. Just make sure when you're pushing it in, both of your tabs line up before you push it completely down because if you don't make sure you can break the little plastic holders right here and you don't want to do that either because those are what lines it up make sure that you don't break them we are getting close to put on the gauge cluster what you're going to want to do you're going to want to try to get them both in you have a vent that's in the back best thing to do is feel for it and once again you have that, those tabs to help you Now everything should be lined up, just make sure. Yeah, as you can tell, mine is pretty much lined up. Once I screw it down, it's gonna hold just like that. You wanna take your long screws and place them back onto the bottoms. And your long screws go only to the bottom. Like I said, once you get all your, your bolts and your screws in the right place and you make sure that you're centered, you should be okay. We're gonna be fighting with this. You gotta take your handle, push it back down again. You're gonna slide it, get it up and over, over the shaft. Then you're gonna find the pins. Yes, they do have little nipples and little tabs that actually lock into the bottom. See these little nipples here? Those need to be lined up with those. The other side is a little bit different. It actually has three back there that need to line up. And then you have more over here. What we're going to be moving to, we have one cord, we have two cord, we have the third cord. At this point, you should only have two bolts left. We have this girl, we have this girl. We have your switches to your lights. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in. I'm gonna grab my other piece, which is but they pretty much sit just like that onto each other. Put your sunglasses and trunk release button back in first. We're gonna plug our trunk button back in. Once again, make sure you plug in all your connectors. Suckier part is, is you have to get your drawer back into the spot. You only have two tabs. You have a tab here, you have a tab on the far side by the steering wheel, and you have one at the bottom. You line it up correctly, Go ahead and clip them back in spot. Place your dimmer, fog light, and light switch back into its case. There's one, two, and three screws. And yes, you do have three screws that are left over. So you're gonna put your screw back in there, put your screw in there, put a screw in there, put your cap back on, and plug that back in. Should be done with the whole project. 